Okay, so diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a very common disorder, and unless you've been living like under a rock or something, you should have some basic understanding of what diabetes is. Let's dive into some of the specifics of it and what differentiates type 1 from type 2 and some of the concerns that we have with our patients. So diabetes is a pancreatic disorder resulting in insufficient or lack of insulin production which leads to elevated blood sugar. Okay, so insulin is, is produced in the beta cells of the pancreas, okay? So what happens with type 1 diabetes? There's type 1 and there's type 2 or the way we refer to them. Type 1 is also known as insulin dependent or juvenile onset, okay? This is an immune disorder. So what happens here is the body actually attacks those insulin producing beta cells in the body. And what can happen with these patients is because they are not producing insulin, they can actually lead to ketosis or diabetes ketoacidosis, okay? So insulin is just not produced at all in here. So the reason they can result in ketosis here is what happens is the body, um, the body starts to break down fats to produce energy, okay? And so the breakdown of those fats learn, turn to ketones and that's why they develop this diabetic ketoacidosis, okay? So again, type ones are insulin dependent, okay? They need insulin because it's an immune disorder and they no longer can produce insulin due to destruction of beta cells within the pancreas, okay? Since they do not produce any insulin, the body starts to break down fats for energy and that can lead to ketosis, okay? Type two on the other hand is insulin resistant. In this one, the beta cells do not produce enough insulin or the body becomes resistant to it, okay? So this is known as type two insulin resistant adult onset, okay? So that's kinda how you can keep the two separated. Type one, the body does not have the ability to produce insulin, okay? Type two, it doesn't produce enough or the body starts to become resistant to that insulin that is circulating, okay? And we'll get into that more. We'll go into DKA and HHNS later, okay? So what, what insulin does, let's look at insulin really quick. So this is a cell, okay? We, on our cell, we have an insulin receptor and we have a glucose channel, let's say. So normally, you can see this is closed, okay? And the only way that that glucose can get into the cell is the insulin has to attach and open that channel, okay? So you can think of insulin as the key. Okay, insulin is the key that opens the cell and allows for glucose to pass into the cell. And why do we need glucose in the cell? Well, glucose provides energy, okay? We're able to get energy and use this energy for our cells to carry out their metabolic processes, okay? So without that insulin, the glucose is not able to get into the cell, okay? So that's the whole purpose of insulin, to open the cell to allow glucose inside. So let's go over it one more time. And type, this is type one diabetes, okay? So this would be our normal set, uh, pancreas releasing insulin. The insulin then allows glucose to go into the cell. In type 1 what happens is, is it's an immune response where our insulin producing beta cells are destroyed and there is no insulin here, okay? So because of that we have all this glucose just sitting inside our body, in our bloodstream, okay? So we have very elevated blood sugars, okay? With type two, what happens is the insulin or the, the pancreas is producing not enough or the body becomes resistant to it despite it, okay? So some of the in glucose is getting into the cell enough to kind of carry out some of the, the metabolic processes, but not enough to sustain the body, okay? So a lot of the glucose will then stay out of the cell and that also leads to hyperglycemia. Okay? So what's our assessment? Let's think of the three P's, your three P's of diabetic assessment. Polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia, okay? Tons of urine, tons of thirst, and tons of hunger, okay? Those are the three things we're gonna see with these patients. We're obviously also going to see elevated blood sugar. We're gonna see blurred vision. This is due to retinopathy, 